welcome to Battle Company Season 1, Episode 5. Before we get into the battle reports, I will go over today's scenario and any changes that has been made to the warbands fighting in this first battle. The updates for the other warbands will precede the second battle. Here we can see the scoreboard from the last round. The fifth scenario we are going to play is Tame the Beast. A cave troll has been placed in the middle of the battlefield. The company that is able to slay the troll will win the scenario. The game will continue until the troll is slain or no other models remain on the board. The troll will always move first, even before heroic moves. It has to charge the nearest model by the shortest route possible. If this is not possible, the player without priority will move the troll its full move in the direction of their choice. If a warrior model defeats the troll, they will become a hero after the game. And if a hero slays the troll, they will receive a free roll on the experience table. The players will roll off and the highest scoring player will choose their table edge and deploy their battle company within 12 inch of their chosen edge. Then the opponent will deploy their battle company within 12 inches of the opposite board edge. The Warg Riders got to choose their deployment zone first. The only change to this warband from last game is that Drozorg got a level upgrade. He became a general and got the lead by example special rule, which gives every friendly model within 6 inches of him plus 1 courage. Updates for the Dwarven Warband. Archer number 2 and uh, Shield number 2 and Two-Handed Weapon number 1 each became a hero, gaining one point of fate. For recruitment, the Dwarves got a Iron Guard. Now let's check for all the battle wounds on Trubo. He has to sit this one out. And Gando, he's fine. This is the table we are playing on. The troll is placed in the center of the board and both warbands have deployed. Let's get into the first round. Priority went to the dwarves, so the warg player chose to move the troll towards them. The dwarves having priority had no other option than to try to move in closer. This warg rider with throwing spear made their courage tests and will try to throw their spear on their way into combat. Needing a 5, and he get it! Needing 6 to wound? No! The troll got charged by two warg riders. Some other wargs are just trying to get in a position to do something the next turn. Drozorg got stuck in the woods and had to move only half move. This one could not make their courage test and had to stand still, and the archers moved up to try to get some shots off. In the shooting phase, this dwarf is trying to shoot at that Borg rider. Needing fives to hit, he misses. Arzet and his friend are trying to shoot at Kaza the dwarf. They need sixes to hit. And now it's the combat phase. The troll has the higher fight, so he will set the bar. And he gets a 6, so the warg riders cannot beat that. The troll has a strength of 6 and a two-handed weapon with the burly special rule. This means he will wound the warg riders on a 3 plus. First attack goes on Snugug. And that's a wound. He will use his fate, which he saves. The second attack will also go on Snugug. And that's a wound. That means that Snugug is dead and his warg will need to take a courage test. Plus one because of Drosorg is nearby. And he fails. The last attack will go on the other dwarf rider. And that's a wound. Killing him outright. Does the warg stick around? He does. He do. Well, that was a failed charge. On to the next round. The troll will move first into combat. The wargs feeling discouraged after this uh, untimely defeat of their two brethren. 
they try to outflank the dwarves instead, and messing up their lines. The right flank of the dwarves moved up to face the war riders coming right at them. And Gendo, with his Vault Warden team, moves up to try to handle the troll. In the shooting phase, Arset and his comrade are trying to shoot at Kaza, needing sixes. Nothing. The Iron Guard is throwing at this warg, needing a five. And he get it. Fives to kill? No. The archer is trying to kill the other warg, needing a four to hit because he stood still. And he hits. Fives to kill? He do. Or he does, rather. The warg is dead. And now the troll will kill the warg. Three attacks, getting a four high. And the warg gets a five, winning the combat. Needing fives to wound. And they get it with a six. The warg riders got priority, and the troll is just moving into combat with the same warg. And how the battlefield has changed in this turn. Over here, the wargs got into a full assault, trying to get rid of the dwarves. Some other wargs just uh, stood in the middle of the battlefield to try to have some options next turn. The dwarves moved up to try to engage the troll with the foe spear. And the single warg is in combat once again with the troll. In the shooting phase, the Iron Guard is throwing an axe at a warg, needing a 5 to hit. And he hits, needing 5s to kill. No. The Dwarven Archer is trying to shoot at this warg. 4 plus, he get it. 5s to kill, he do. I'm always saying that wrong. He does. Proper English, mate. And the warg is dead. Combat with the troll, and the troll sets the bar at a 6, so the warg cannot win. Needing only 2s to wound the warg, and he is super dead. Bye bye. Oof. Here we have 4 fights, starting on the right. The dwarf with the two-handed axe will use just a single hand weapon. And he gets a 2, and the warg rider a 6. The dwarf is knocked prone, so the warg rider needs fives to kill. And he doesn't get it. In the next fight, the dwarf will be shielding. And he gets a four. RZ gets also four, and will use one point of might to win the fight. Needing sixes to wound. One six. He has a point of fate, and will use it now. And he fails. It's just like Dominos over here. He's dead. In the next fight, Kaza will fight normally and he gets a five. The warg gets double ones. Can Kaza kill him on a five? No. The last combat, the dwarf will strike regularly and he gets a one. Rosorg and his warg gets a three, winning the combat. They need fives, and they get one. But the dwarf has a point of fate, and he fails. So he is dead. Priority goes to the dwarves, and the troll is charging into Gando. Throwing weapon on the way into combat, needing fours. He misses. The dwarves tried to tie up as many warg riders as possible over here and got into combat with the iron guard and the warg here. The dwarven archer moved up to try to support his comrades in close combat in next turn and Drozorg got the better of the foe spear and assaulted right into him, negating the combat with the troll. Let's start a fighting phase. The dwarf with the two-handed axe will use one-handed in this combat and he gets a two. And the wargs get four. Fives to kill. And he gets one. Oh, no fate for him, so he is dead. Kaza is fighting normally, and he gets a four. And the wargs. A six. Double six, actually. Sixes to kill. One six. Fate roll. No save, but he will use one might point to turn that to a four. The Iron Warrior with two attacks gets two. And the Warg, five. Needing fives to kill. 
Nothing. Drozorg against a foe spear, and the Drozorg gets two. Measly, measly. Foe spear, four. Getting fives to kill, two. Now it's the troll's turn, and he will get four. Can Gando beat this? No, he gets a two. And the iron shield, he gets a six. Minus one is a five, but he will still win the combat. Gando will need to roll a 6 to wound, and the shield will need to roll a 5. The blue die is Gando. Nothing. Priority goes to the Warg Riders, and the troll charges into Gando once again. The Warg Riders are taking a chance by not charging into the Dwarf World Warden team, hoping that they will inflict a wound and not two, so they can finish off the troll after this. Kaza is trapped by three Warg Riders, the Iron Guard is fighting two Wargs, and Drozog charged into the Dwarven Archer. Starting with Drozog, he gets a six, and the Dwarf gets four. Should have rolled two attacks for Drozog, but it doesn't matter. He needs fives to kill, and he gets the six. The Dwarven Archer is actually a hero, and he has a point of fate. He will roll it now, and no. He is dead. The Iron Guard against the Wargs. The Iron Guard gets four. And the Warg gets double sixes. Needing fives to kill the Iron Guard? Nothing. Kaza is in a very tricky situation. So he will be shielding. And he gets a six. This means that the Warg Riders cannot beat his roll because of his fight value. And they just have to back off. Now comes the exciting part. The troll will roll first and he gets a five. Gando, three. And the Walt Warden team gets also five, which is not enough to beat the troll's fights of a six. The troll will go after the iron shield first. Needs a five to kill him. He doesn't get it. Second attack. He gets it. The iron shield is dead. The last attack will go on Gando, needing threes, and he gets a wound. Gando will use his fate points, which he fails, but he has two wounds, so he has one wound remaining. Priority went to the Warg Riders once again, and the troll charged into Gando. The Drozorg is going to attack the Iron Guard with his two Wargs, and Kaza is once again surrounded. The foe spear, uh, trying its opportunity to kill the troll, went into combat with it. Let's start with the surrounded Kaza. He will be shielding and he gets a three. And the Warg Riders get lots of sixes. Twelve attacks, needing sixes. One, two, three, four sixes. So Kaza is super dead. The Iron Guard will set the bar at a three. That is probably not going to be enough. Rozog gets a 5, and he wins the combat. 8 attacks on the dwarves, needing 5s to kill. And gets 2 sixes, so he is dead. I fear that this is the last chance the dwarves will have to claim victory. The troll will set the bar at a 3, so here is their chance. Kando gets a 6, and they win the combat. This is exciting. Gando is needing a 6 to wound the troll, and he gets a 4, and he does not have enough might to get that up to a 6, unfortunately. The foe spear will need a 5+, plus and no dice. The wargs do not take the chance that the dwarves will uh, kill the troll this turn, so they assault the foe spear. Gando also assaulted the troll, uh, so here we have two fights. First, we take the troll against Gando, and the troll gets a 6, winning the combat automatically. Needing 4s to kill, and he gets 2 4s and a 6. So Gando is dead. Rest in peace, little man. Drozog and a warg is fighting the foe spear, and they get a 6 high. And the foe spear gets a 2, losing the combat. And he is trapped. 5s to kill. Yeah, he is a gunner. That means that there is only the troll 
and the war riders left. But the battle is not over, the troll will move first into the closest model, which is this warg. You couldn't see that, but you can now. Onwards to combat. The troll has two wounds left, so the warg riders have their work cut out for them. They were not able to trap the troll due to the terror rule and was not able to pass their courage tests. Only three wargs are in combat, and the troll gets... A 6, which means he automatically wins the combat. First attack will go on Drozog, and he needs a... 3 plus to wound him, and he does not wound. The second attack on the same guy, no wound. What a lucky break. And... One wound on Drozog. He will use his fates, and he do not save, but he will use his might to get that up to a 4, saving. In the next round, once again, the warg riders are overreaching and are not able to trap the troll because their comrades did not make their courage tests. The troll gets a three high, so here is their chance. Drozog gets it. Drozog got charged by the troll, so he gets only the one attack. The warg has also one attack, but Arset charged in and gets two attacks for the cavalry bonus. They need 5s to wound, and they get 1-5, taking the troll down to 1 wound remaining. Now, Drozog failed his courage test, but this time there are 4 models that in is in combat with the troll. And the troll gets a 6, which means he wins the fight. He will strike at RZ and needing 2s to wound. That is a wound. RZ will fate. And he saves. Second attack on Arset. And he's dead. The last attack will go on the other warg rider over here, needing fours to kill. And he get it. So he's also dead. Actually, the warg has to test their courage, which is a fail. This time only two models got into combat with the troll. And the troll gets. A six winning again. This is looking grim. So these guys backs away. Whoop. And he will strike at Drozog, getting a one, which is a miss. Needing trees here. And a two. Can he survive this? Oh, he takes one wound. He is out of fate. Will the warg run away? He does. So he is gone. The wargs are really scared now, and no, none of them could make the charge. So the troll will fight one warg. Let's see how this goes. The troll gets a 6 and automatically wins. Will he kill him on a 2 plus? Yes, he will. The warg is dead. I fear this is the last chance for the warg riders. The troll gets 5. Then it is possible. The warg gets 4. And the warg rider... A five, so it's a tie, and loses because of the troll's fight value. Now the troll has a strength of six, and both of these models have a defense of four, which means he will normally wound on a three plus, but because of the two-handed weapon and the burly special rule, he will wound on a two plus. So this is looking really dark for the warg riders. Two plus on the warg rider. Yep, he's dead. Will his mount run off? He will, and the last warg is also dead. So the troll reigns supreme, and the battle is a draw. Battle number two is soon going to be underway, and the troll is placed back in the center of the board. Updates for the warband. Sork has gained the uh, gift of the Valar and gained one fate point. In addition to this, he leveled up and got an additional attack to two attacks. Gash cured his arm wound and can now carry a shield. And the Rark also leveled, gaining a free heroic combat in every combat he is in. No reinforcements for the Goblin Horde, but one archer will miss this game. Updates for the Army of the Dead. Kaspar has uh, cured his wound, uh, as well as being protected by the Valar, gaining one extra fate. He also leveled up to get one more fight value. 
Archer chose the path of the Sorcerer, gaining the Transfix 5+, plus and an extra will point, up to 2 will. He also got the upgraded Transfix, so he can now uh, cast that spell on a 4+. Plus. And this is the deployment. The Moria Goblins got to choose their table edge and deployed first. And then uh, the Army of the Dead deployed second, over on the other side. Sork deployed here with five additional warriors. Rark and Gosh, the Limping Brothers, deployed over here with a Prowler and a Spearman. And the two bowmen over to their left. Galad deployed over here with two of his friends. Artur in the middle because he na he's now a sorcerer. And Kaspar with two of his friends on the other side. Priority went to the Dead of Dunharrow, so the Moria Goblins can choose where the troll is going to go. And they will send it over here. In the movement phase, the army of the dead moved up to try to engage the troll. The goblins sent a flanking force with Sork in the front to try to cut off the enemy undead. Over here, Rark and Gosh were limping forward towards the troll, and the archers moved half their move to be able to shoot in the shooting phase. In the shooting phase, the goblin archers will shoot at this guy on the left, the undead that is. Eating sixes to hit because they moved. One six. Sixes by fours to wound. Nothing. Priority went to the goblins, but the troll will move first into combat with Galad. By the way, I forgot to mention, the goblins are outnumbered uh, points-wise, so they get two rerolls during the game. In the movement phase, the Moria goblins just moved closer towards the undead. The archers stood still so they could shoot at full capacity. Archer in the back there is a sorcerer and will cast Transfix on the troll, needing a 4+, plus to succeed. And it doesn't get it, but he will use a Points of Might, so to make it a 4. This means that the troll cannot strike blows if it wins the combat. And passing his Courage test, he moves into combat with the troll. In the shooting phase, the goblins shoot at the closest enemy dead one. Needing 5 to hit, nothing. Now, on to combat. The troll will set the bar at a 6, which means the undead cannot win. He is transfixed, so he cannot strike any blows, and the dead of Dunhero just backs away. Priority goes to the dead of Dunharrow, and the troll charges into one of them. Archer will once again try to transfix the troll, needing a 4+, plus, and he fails. In the movement phase, the dead assaulted the troll once again, but one of them failed their courage tests. Over here, the dead was charging in, but got countercharged by the brave goblins. Gosh and Rark limped their way uh, across the battlefield to try to engage the dead next turn. And the archers stood still to be able to shoot. The archers shooting into the combat and targeting this dead one. Needing fives to hit. Nothing. The first fight on the left, it's Sork against a army of the dead guy with shield. Sork having two attacks, getting a three. And the dead guy gets... 6. Needing force to wound, gets a 2. The next fight in the back, 2 spearmen against 1 dead guy. The spearman gets 5. And the dead, 6. Winning the combat. Striking a blow at one of the spearmen, needing force to kill. And he get it. So this one is dead. 3 goblins versus Kaspar, the goblin sets the bar at a 6, and Kaspar gets also 6, winning on fight value. Forced to kill, and he gets it, one goblin dies. It's starting to get very late, I meant that a goblin died. Now for the fight with the troll, and the troll sets the bar at a 6, which means he wins the fight no matter what. 
The dead have a defense of 7 and 8, and the troll has a strength of 6. This means that whichever model he chooses to hit, he needs 5s to wound. But he has a two-handed weapon and is burly, so he will need 4s. First strike on Galad. Gets a 2. Second one on Galad. Another 2, and the last attack... A 1! No wounds! Priority went to the goblins this time. But the troll will still charge into a dead one. The prowler tries to charge into this guy. He needs an 8 plus to pass his courage. And he do! I mean he does! Proper English, mate. Throwing his dagger on his way in, needing a 4. And he get it! Needing a 6 to kill? No. He just moves in. At the end of the move phase, some of the goblins managed to charge the scary dead ones. Sorek didn't, however. Uh, Rark and Gash moved up, they haven't enough move to get into combat. And the dead of Dunhero charged the troll and trapped him. The goblin super snipers hang back to fire at the combat. The archers are shooting at Galad on the right there. And then need fives to hit. Nothing. Two versus two over here. The goblin sets the bar at a six. And Kaspar and his friends answers with a five. Kaspar will use his point of might to turn that into a six, winning the combat. Four is to kill. No. This fight, the goblin gets one and loses automatically. Four is to kill. No. The Prowler is swinging two-handed, and he gets a 1, losing the combat. That is not true, because he has a fight of 3, which is equal to the dead guy. And the dead guy gets a 2, and wins. Forced to kill the Prowler, and he's dead. The Troll fights, the Troll gets a 5. Galad still has might, so he will be the white die, needing a 6 to win this. And they get it! Since the dead are attacking the courage value of the troll, and the troll has a courage value of 3, the army of the dead has a strength of 3, they need 4s to wound the troll. Here comes the 6 attacks, let's see what they get. And they get 2 wounds on the troll! The dead of Dunharo got priority, and the troll is charging into one of them. The army of the dead got priority and trapped the troll once again. One of them went over to Garsh and Rark to try to stop them from countercharging. Here we have a one-on-one -on -one combat, and over here there's a one-on-one -on -one with Kaspar and Zork, and a two-on-one -on -one with regular guys. Once again the super goblin snipers will try to shoot at Galad. Fives to hit? No. Two goblins over here, they get a 3, and the dead guy gets a 2, losing the combat. Goblins need 6s by 4s to kill him, and they get nothing. Zork the orc, which is not an orc, but a goblin, 2 attacks against Kaspar, he gets a 5. Kaspar answers with a 3. Zork needs 6s by 4s, and he gets 1 6, can he get a 4? No! Combat over here, the goblin gets a 1, losing the combat. Getting forced to kill, and he get it, the goblin is dead. I totally forgot that Rark has a free heroic combat every turn, so he will use that now, it doesn't matter much. The undead sets the bar at a 4. Rark gets a 3. And Gash, 4. And the Spearman in the back gets a 4. So Gosh will use one point of might to win the combat. The dead guy is trapped, so they double their attacks, needing 6s to kill him. And they do not get it. But Rark will use his point of might to turn that into a 6, killing the army of the dead guy. Well, the heroic combat went off, and the models are free to engage new targets. They need to take courage tests in order to charge the other models. And they all failed, scared and pissed their pants. The troll fights, the troll gets a 5. Galad, 4. 
or two, five, and the last one, one. Artur will use his might point to turn that to a six, winning the combat. The troll has one wound left. Can they kill him? They do! The troll is dead, and the army of the dead is victorious. Here we have the scoreboard. This is it for now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. By subscribing, you'll stay up to date with our latest videos and be a part of our growing community. We appreciate your support and it encourages us to create more valuable content. So go ahead, hit the like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you in the next video.